Roger Stone is popping in with us in this segment and the next. We're about to go to break, but Roger Stone, you say you've got major breaking news uh, dealing with the shakeup in the campaign. Uh, Bannon, the head of Breitbart, has said that it's just an expansion of the campaign, but mainstream media says this is the campaign in disarray. What's really going on? Yeah, no, this, that's a total mischaracterization. This is typical of the mainstream media's attempts to undermine the Trump campaign. Uh, Donald Trump has been running a campaign with a skeletal staff for some time. He has a good national political director, Jim Murphy, but he's totally immersed in building a national organization, particularly in the key states. Uh, he has an excellent press operation uh, with Hope Hicks and Jason Miller. He has, uh, he has a campaign chairman and a campaign deputy. Uh, the Clinton machine has hundreds of people on the payroll. So uh, this is two exceptionally talented people, Kellyanne Conway, who I think Donald uh, and Ivanka uh, have a great confidence in, uh, who has a special expertise and knowledge about women voters, uh, a friend of mine from uh, lives in my native state of Connecticut, uh, and uh, Steve Bannon, who, like you and I, Alex, is a nationalist who believes in that. And so patriots sovereignty. got added to the whole deal, and the media spins it into some type of defeat that he's adding some heavy hitters. No, look, and uh, there's no question that Bannon, like me, is an advocate for an outsider strategy. Trump needs to take on the two-party duopoly, including those at the Republican National Committee. So it's National accurate to Committee say the, the, the brass knuckles him. are going on right now. Well, I mean, in all honesty, a week ago, the Republican National Committee spokesman entertains a question from the press saying, are you cutting off the presidential candidate's uh, financing and support? And instead of saying absolutely out of the question, he says that's a decision we'll make in October. That is treasonous. That's not the role of the Republican National And this Committee. is Donald Trump who's raising the money for these ungrateful little neocon bastards. Well, the, the, this is what you get when you make peace with the rhinos. They undermine you. I, I happen to know a major, major Republican No honor donor. among thieves. Stay there, Roger. We're going to give you the floor for one segment. I know you're busy. When we come back, get ready. Roger is hot. Stay with us. All right, Paul Watson is hosting right now, but I'm over into the fourth hour because Roger Stone's here with breaking news. Paul Watson, jump in any time. He's about to be hosting the show in about 10 minutes. Anytime you want. Roger Stone, former head of the Trump campaign, his uh, former uh, business partner, was the head of it, now still a major part of it. But they brought in Bannon, the head of Breitbart, who's known as a real street fighter. And the word is that if, if you think Trump took the gloves off the last month, get ready for brass knuckles to be put onto those uh, fists. So let's talk about what this really means, Roger Stone. Uh, Alex, uh, look, I think this is a giant plus for the Trump campaign. Uh, uh, Steve Bannon is a, uh, is a street fighter. He is a nationalist. He understands the immigration issue particularly well. Uh, he is hardline anti-Islamic terrorists and radical Muslims. Uh, he is uh, skeptical. Uh, uh, he's not a neocon. Uh, he very much understands the globalists are the enemy here uh, to democracy, to freedom. Uh, he's not a fan of George Soros, to say the least. So I share his worldview very much. Uh, he is also a very successful executive who really understands the new media, which is uh, going to be important for Trump's candidacy. He's not replacing Paul Manafort. He is not, he is not, uh, uh, there, this isn't a shakeup. It's an expansion. And he said that. He's augmenting things. So, so you have the New York Times and the Washington Post, and most likely being propped up by Sidney Blumenthal uh, and uh, Corey Lewandowski, trying to write this as some kind of a shakeup when Trump expands his campaign with two more pros. Because many hands make work light. I mean, this is a presidential campaign. Sure, Hillary has 500 people. Staff. Trump has a 50. But but uh, doesn't uh, – I'm mean, getting on to Lewandowski for a minute because, I, I mean, obviously he's, he's old news. But he really is out there tweeting against Manafort. He really is like a Benedict Arnold. I mean, maybe uh, well, Trump should the call – Well, for to go out and say, I only want best what's best for Mr. Trump in the campaign, attacking Trump's campaign manager is not helpful to the campaign. The guy's a lout. I mean, he just has no no sense uh, well, of... Well, this seemed to scare the candidate. mainstream media. Some that, people are in this to elect Trump. Others are, are measuring the curtains for their next job. It's very... It's pathetic. Uh, exactly. So so, so this is a big plus, though, uh, having Bannon on board. 
I think uh, it's uh, it's terrific. And Kelly Ann is a is a is an experienced pro, and they work well with uh, Manafort uh, and his very skilled deputy Rick Gates, a very capable guy who helps keep the trains on time. Uh, and I think they all have a good relationship with the Trump children, who are the greatest assets of this campaign. I mean, I don't know why the media is so fixed on the internal workings of our campaign. Could they just focus on the content of Trump's speeches? Well, they, that's the whole they, point. That's the whole point. Tough, and the scrutiny, if they would put the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative scams, because they're, they're slush funds for grifters. They're not legitimate charities. They're breaking more charity laws than you can imagine. They are vehicles for the facilitation of multi-million dollar bribes for, from China, from Russia, from Saudi. But the New York Times isn't interested in that. Instead, they, they cook up a fabricated story and put it on page one about Paul Manafort's perfectly legal dealings in Ukraine where he ran a campaign. It never worked for the Ukrainian government. There is no investigation. He is not the subject of an investigation. There is no evidence against him that's admissible in any court. There's no evidence that he took any $12 million in payments. This is a, this is a hit job. It certainly uh, it's is. It's not incidental that the owner of the New York Times is the largest single donor, a Mexican citizen, uh, against... Uh, and again, the then they say we're against Mexicans. No, what is some Mexican kingpin... The richest guy in the world, arguably, connected to all this corruption, doing, owning the New York Times, writing all these these hit pieces. I mean, I mean, if I own some giant newspaper in Mexico and I'm up here in Texas, the Mexicans would be like, shut up, gringo, and they should. It's like, and what are you doing involved in our stuff? I cannot tell you how many reporters in the mainstream media said they read the Times above the page, page one story, above the fold story, and said, this is a nothing burger. They covered themselves five times by saying Manafort, who's not the subject of the investigation, it was a, it was a total fabrication. So uh, meanwhile, the Times does not dig into the very serious ongoing crimes at the Clinton Foundation. I'm talking about things that have transpired since Peter Schweitzer wrote his terrific book, Clinton Cash. So ongoing criminal conspiracies. I want to bring Paul Watson in, who's hosting this hour. Uh, don't be timid, Paul. Uh, come in here and uh, any comments or questions for Roger Stone. I've got a few more. No, I think with the Bannon situation, Alex, there was a headline in Bloomberg Business Week um, back in October. This man is the most dangerous political operative in America. That was before he was even officially on board with the Trump campaign. And you know this why? He's how... influential, he's smart, and he basically sounds like yeah. Alex Jones. Well, that's why this, I had to send out on tweet a congratulations, Steve Bannon. However, you are the second most dangerous man in American politics. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Bannon uh, is a good friend of mine, uh, and uh, he was actually featured uh, in last year's international best and worst dressed list as one of the worst dressed men in America. <laughs> okay. And he loved it. Because I explained, this is a guy who is so concerned about saving the country, so concerned about saving America, that he eats at his computer. This guy is a workaholic uh, and a whirlwind of oh, great I know, ideas. I know. I was emailing uh, with him this morning. He not worry about worldly crap like that. Just get me a hamburger. He was responding in real time. And I talked so, to somebody else in the office that was talking to him while he was real time while I'm talking to him on email. Yeah, no, look, so the guy, is he, he, is, uh, he is a whiz, uh, and he understands the new media. I, I am, by the way, uh, Paul, a huge Paul Watson fan. I love your writing uh, and some of the investigative stuff you do. It's terrific. Well, Absolutely. Thanks, uh, other stuff on the radar, and then I know you're busy. I'm going to let you go, Roger, and I'm going to turn this over to Paul. What else is going on? I mean, obviously so much is happening. We've got... On Fox News, political science professor, he's been right about five or six elections, says 87... Let, let, me say, let me say this. The Clintons' activities in Haiti post-earthquake post are about to blow in a big way. This will reveal corruption that will be stunning to the American people. Well, it's known they stole more than half the money for themselves, and then she gave 97% of the money that she gives the foundation to herself. Uh, but let's remember, previously, their, their defense on all of this is you have no proof. 
Oh, so, so, so uh, Guccifer's uh, got I it. Just, all I'm going to say is I think the Haiti scandal will blow sky high. Good. And, and the next week? Well, sometime in the very near future. Okay, let's the, expand. See, the great thing is the truth can't be suppressed anymore. I understand that in the 80s, the Clintons could lean on uh, 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 news organizations. I wrote a piece on voter rigging for The Hill. And The Hill has come under intense pressure from the censors, David Brock, the self-appointed censor who's operating illegally under his tax status. Yeah, it's like coming under it. censorship from some serial killer or something. Yeah, I mean, dem demanding that we not publish the writings of Roger Stone. Why? Why are you opposed? Well, let people decide for themselves. Let them read my... Yeah, why are you banned on everything? Because you do link to Stanford Research saying it's rigged and CBS News saying it's rigged. You're, they're pissed because... Uh, my, my piece is thoroughly footnoted. Uh, let readers decide for themselves whether I'm full of bull or whether I make a good case. I'm telling you the machines can been, be rigged. Easily. Well, they have been. It's a minute I'm telling you you can use a $15 advice you can get at Radio Shack or Best Buy to vote multiple times on these machines without detection. Sure. Let me uh, throw this so, at you because we're almost and, out of time. And I'm telling you that this, I actually think that, uh, that both parties have rigged the machines in major contests in the last several years. Let me throw this curveball at you, Roger. We're almost out of time here. I want to pull up one more question. The situation with Hillary's health, I mean, I don't just hype that she looks really sick because, oh, that'll get her out of the race. We've got videos and, and stuff where she has to be helped up now, not just the photo drug show, but Secret Service holding her up, her having to sit on a chair, she, her toddling around. She's obviously degenerating quickly. And we can scroll through the article. Uh, Hillary Stools, hashtag, n n a new article, Clinton yeah. using chairs as crutches. In countless speeches, you scroll down, it shows the Secret Service having to hold her up. I mean, she looks yes. like she's sitting on a toilet or something, maybe yes. changing her diaper. What's going on here? Uh, I don't think that she is well. Uh, remember, we have the sworn testimony of uh, Huma Abedin saying she's easily confused. Uh, she is, uh, uh, I don't think she's in good health. I don't know uh, what the the de degenerative disease she has is. I've seen various physicians write their theories uh, based on appearance and other symptoms, but none of them, of course, have examined them. Uh, I, I, she does not look well to me. Her whole campaign is style is based around the fact that she has no stamina. This is why we have no press conference in 200. But then she says it's kooky if we say she has no stamina. She has no stamina. She said she, last week she could barely get up. If she lays down, she can't get back up. But it's a total right. conspiracy theory that she has no stamina and that she's sleeping. Well, uh, I understand that. So one has to uh, hope that in the campaign that the rigors of the campaign uh, will demonstrate this more and more to the American voters. Beyond that, uh, you know, I'm not, I understand the intricacy of uh, losing sympathetic female voters if you raise this in the wrong way. But my guess is that the American people will catch on to this by in the next 90 days. Uh, we've already caught on to it. The non-elite media has already figured this out. Uh, it's only a matter of time before the voters figure it out. Well, I'm glad that Trump is weighing in on this. Let's play that short clip and get a final question from Watson. And I'm going to hand the baton to Watson here with Roger Stones, who's, who's got to go. Uh, here's Trump a few days ago talking about uh, Hillary. And the big question is, is Umid Abedin actually the groom of the stool? Hillary Clinton has supported tax increases on the middle class for her entire career. She's voted for higher taxes 235 times in the Senate. I thought it was more than that. That doesn't sound... Think of it. She's, ra she's voted for tax increases. And by the way, she's proposing a big one today in her speech, her teleprompter speech. She's got... A, she's got... Her speeches are so short, though. They don't last long. You know, they're like, 10 minutes, let's get out of here. Go back home and go to sleep. <laughs> Three days later, she gets up and she does another one and goes back home and goes to sleep. Oh, boy, is ISIS hoping for her. Is China hoping? Can you imagine China? They come in. You ever negotiate with the Chinese? They're tough. They're tough. You got to hit them back with a lot of energy. 
I just don't see her winning. Uh, in, in closing, and I'm going to let you go, uh, Roger. I appreciate your time. StoneZone.com. We have the Clinton Rape shirt that you designed available exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. That helps fund our operation and what you're doing. What do you make of uh, USA Today app maker Trump will win, saying their people are way more Trump than Hillary? Uh, political science professor Trump is 87% winning. He's been right about at least five, maybe six elections. Uh, social media partners. Uh, patterns show Trump is looking at landslide victory. I mean, I just see the grassroots, the crowds, the people. I just you know, yeah, see it, this. It's, it's more evidence that these polls, like Reuters, are rigged to show her further ahead or ahead when she's not. There's clearly no energy surrounding her campaign. She's drawing tiny crowds. The media has to endeavor to shoot the uh, event in a way to make it look like there's more people than there are. Trump is bringing record crowds everywhere he goes. Uh, at the end of the day, I still argue between a voter fraud, which is not non-existent, as the left says, but somewhat limited, you're still going to have efforts to vote many illegal immigrants uh, in the machine-run Democratic states. And, uh, as I have posited, these machines are quite easy to rig. Indeed, there's evidence that they have been rigged before. This is why uh, I'm organizing a project to do exit polls in Pennsylvania and in probably Virginia. Well, we're going to have you back up, but I've got to say this. i got to interrupt. I got to interrupt since you said it. Reuters, U.S. offers states help to fight election hacking. That's Reuters with Jay Johnson. I thought Obama said two weeks ago or a week and a half ago he doesn't even know what election fraud is. Now suddenly they say it's a major issue. You were on here last week, and, or Monday. You said you were more worried about the federal elections people doing the hacking than anybody else, and now they're announcing it, Roger. Final comment. Yeah, no, look, I, I think we know the we know the rubric here and how this works. First, you, you set an expectation with the polls, and then between voter fraud and election theft, which are two completely different things. Voter fraud involves people voting multiple times, people who are not eligible to Dead vote people. voting, illegal immigrants voting. And election manipulation, uh, pardon me, machine manipulation, this election can be heisted. Uh, and there's several ways to combat that. Some third party, a truly independent party, should be allowed to look at the software for these machines be uh, on the eve of the election. But Jay Johnson says that. he's going to hook up some special stuff to make sure it's all accurate. Mm. Yeah, right. Uh, look, when the president came out and said the idea of, a, of voter fraud and election theft was ridiculous, that was the instant in which I knew they were going to try it. In fact, I don't. We got to find the clip. You actually said whether it was last week or Monday when we brought this up. You said, "Watch, watch out! They're going to send people." That's who you got to watch. And then, sure enough, they're doing it. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I think there's a number of ways to both discourage the theft of this election and to uh, and to document it. This is not, as some on the left want to say, Trump positioning himself so that no matter the circumstances of his losing, if he loses, he can say that it was stolen. No, he has to have solid evidence that there is theft, uh, evidence of voter fraud or evidence of machine manipulation. That can be collected, and I, I think for to protect the the security and honesty of this election, it's incumbent on Trump. Well, we're going to do it together. To do we're going to do it together, and you're absolutely right. Look, they claimed he was being a sore loser when he was winning primaries, and he was contesting it, but he won because he contested. Bernie didn't, he lost. So Michael Moore and, and Cuomo's son, they can all go to hell. StoneZone.com, thank you so much, Roger. Great to be with you. There he goes. All right.